Good afternoon, and uh, I want to say thank you uh, to you on the Student Success Committee from the board for allowing me a moment uh, to speak to you. I know there are some um, handouts uh, that uh, Jennifer Ari was going to put together uh, for you, maybe even slides uh, that uh, she and I had visited uh, about. Uh, and so I want to thank her for that, and I want to thank uh, Jen Bennett and Jennifer Ari for inviting me uh, to uh, come and engage you. Uh, I would have liked to have been there in person. The um, issue was, for me, is that we have our weekly chapel service um, at, uh, in, on Wednesdays in Sharp Chapel, where we offer a 30-minute uh, uh, service called WOW Worship on Wednesday. And then following the service, we open the table up to anyone who wishes to have a meal. Uh, so about right now that you may be reviewing this video, I am in the midst of getting ready for my worship on Wednesday. But it is an opportunity for me um, to visit with you just a moment about student success. And I know that is a terribly important issue here at the University of Tulsa. I've been associated with the University of Tulsa since uh, the mid-1970s. Uh, I came here as an undergraduate uh, from 74 to 78. I was here doing master's work from uh, 85 to 88, and then my doctoral work from 88 to 90. Uh, and then I came here as chaplain in 1999, in my 24th year. I've seen um, the, the, actually the, the breadth of, uh, of our uh, student uh, approaches uh, here on campus. Uh, when I was here, we were a commuter school, uh, not uh, heavily residential. Uh, it, that was in some ways detrimental, I think, to students of my time, although we did have sororities and fraternities. We did have ways to engage through student groups. But for the most part, there wasn't the prevalence of campus ministries that we have today, uh, then. Uh, so I had to find my own support group outside of the university because I, again, was a commuter student. Well, today, we, it is reversed. We're 80%, uh, obviously, you know, uh, are residentials, and then 20% or maybe less are commuting students. The opportunity today to really engage student success um, is, uh, is, is wonderful. I mean, and you all have done a good job. As I said, you, you've done very well. I love the initiatives. I love the, the, the student coaching. Um, I love the agreement of, uh, for students to come in and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, take the opportunity to say, I will do these things uh, and I will follow these things and this will lead to my success. That, that is a great uh, opportunity for our students today to guarantee them a, uh, a position, a job. One of the things that uh, campus ministries, I think, can do to help uh, support uh, this engagement and actually perhaps uh, deepen it, uh, student success on campus, is to help students overcome what are two main factors that work against student resilience, and that is the factor of loneliness and the factor of isolation. Campus ministries do a very good job of uh, engaging our students, uh, allowing them to gather with others um, that, uh, who will uh, be with them, uh, develop relationships, one thing you have to understand about our campus ministry is that there is uh, no coercive proselytizing allowed on campus. Every campus minister, every campus entity agrees to that statement, which means that for us, ours is really a focus on a student. We will obviously talk about faith if asked, but it's to focus upon a student and upon the needs that a student has. We want to draw students into group settings. We want them to feel as if there's someone that they could come to or other students that they could engage with uh, to, to kind of keep them out of that isolation, uh, loneliness, um, 
position that could hurt their success. Many of the ways that we do this on campus in our campus ministries do it for food, through food, um, and inviting uh, folks to come and share a meal. And they're across campus. You can, you could have a lunch at any student ministry, any day of the week, here, uh, and and that and that is true. Any student would be welcome, and in fact, some even offer evening meals. It's important uh, to gather around a meal. I mean, that's kind of the center of, of uh, our faith life, is gathering around a meal. Um, and when gathering around a meal, you, you know, the kind of barriers kind of come down. Uh, where you visit with each other, you begin to see commonalities with others. Those build relationships. We have a lot of ministries that do small group work. We have uh, ministries, obviously, that worship. We have ministries that uh, really um, challenge uh, students to look beyond themselves, to understand that there is something larger than themselves. One of the, some of the isolation can become very internal, focused on themselves, that there is no one outside of themselves that, that cares about them. And what our campus ministry wants to do is to say that, no, we're here. It doesn't matter who you are, what you believe. We're here for you. Uh, for example, on Wednesdays, this, this Wednesday, we'll have uh, a worship service. And then we'll have, we'll feed about 130, maybe 150 folks. Not all of those go to worship, which is great. That's fine. I invite anyone who wishes to have a meal, to come and have a meal. And in many ways, I can look, I look across, um, when I walk through after our worship service and I see everyone's seated either in the chapel or outside, it, it actually looks like a, a, a wonderful combination of students from the world, uh, truly, from across the globe. Uh, that, is, that is such an, in, an enjoyment. Uh, for them to know they have a, a space that is safe, that will feed them. Uh, and I always go around to check to see how they're doing, to make sure they're all right. And I'm not the only one. I'm just saying that's what our campus ministers do. In fact, others, campus ministers that are there will just engage with other students. Um, and it, it is a time uh, to develop a relationship. Those are critical to combat, as I said, loneliness and isolation. Um, I think it's important to note that over half of our students are uh, about 54% um, indicate that they have some uh, religious preference or they can identify with some religious group. Of that 54%, 86% uh, identify themselves as Christian. Uh, we find 7% that do not necessarily identify as, uh, as any particular group, but they do identify as being religious. Uh, we see about 1% of our, um, or 7%, um, one, 4%, I'll get it right, 4% of our students are Muslim. We will find that uh, there's 1% are Hindu, and then 1% are Jewish, and 1% are Buddhist. So that we have a wonderful uh, cross-section of all sorts of faith traditions. And, um, and we do have ministries to, uh, to engage with those. We have the major uh, faith traditions, obviously, the Christian, uh, the Jewish, and uh, Islam, with, uh, with the mosque, for our Muslim students with the Hillel House, uh, for our Jew Jewish students, and then with various standing ministries and ministries that operate within the freestanding uh, ministries on campus. Uh, freestanding ministries are uh, the Baptist Student Us Union, the Wesley Foundation, uh, the Little Blue House, United Campus Ministry, um, the uh, our own Sharp Chapel, um, and uh, the Newman Center, um, and I'm sitting here trying, and uh, again with the Hillel and uh, with uh, with the uh, mosque, uh, there are those anchors for our students, and then there are other 
campus ministries that uh, engage with the students and will launch themselves, like our international student ministries are in the uh, Wesley uh, Center. Uh, you'll find that uh, there is a uh, sub uh, uh, within our St. Mary Parish or the Newman Center, uh, there is a group of uh, uh, Catholic students that are called the uh, Focus. Um, and so they're there, and you will find other campus ministries, uh, particularly uh, here in the chapel, uh, will have uh, the other campus ministries that will have events here. So there are, there are always opportunities for students uh, to engage, and we provide settings. Again, we provide settings to build relationships. I don't think there is anything better than to build a relationship so a student doesn't realize that they have no one to turn to. And, um, and our students that I see are just remarkable students. Um, I looked at the uh, top 10 uh, freshmen and the, uh, the uh, outstanding seniors this past weekend at uh, uh, homecoming. And uh, one out of each of those groups is a student I work with that uh, I have the opportunity to engage all the time. And I would venture to say that that uh, is probably uh, uh, quite common with our other campus ministries. I would say almost to every to each student there. I mean, I'm guessing, but uh, it would be that one of those that the, the student itself is engaged in one of the campus ministries, one of the faith communities here on campus. Um, so, again, I just I wanted to take an opportunity to just of communicate to you that campus ministries here on campus are uh, critical for our student success. Our campus ministries have been overlooked, uh, particularly the previous several years, uh, going back into the early 2000s. Um, they, they were actually overlooked by the chapel. Um, since 2005, when I became the Sharp Chaplain, it has been important to me to encourage the growth of campus ministries, to welcome all sorts of campus ministries here uh, across faith traditions so that our students may feel comfortable, that they may have an identification with a the group. These uh, campus ministries can hold students accountable uh, for, for behavior, obviously, for uh, their, for, for their study habits. Uh, there are all sorts of ways, and they don't do it heavy-handedly. But because of their presence here, they're able to engage a student and to help them know that there is someone who cares about their success at the University of Tulsa. Well, I, I thank you. There are probably more things I could say, and I know I only have a brief window, and I have exceeded that brief, brief window, and any of you that know me know that I cannot shut up quickly. But it has come to a time when I need to do so. Again, I thank you, and I hope this has been helpful. I'm open to talk to any one of you at any time about the, the breadth of our work here on campus to help our students succeed in life. Again, thank you so much. Bye-bye.